Tonight, the major police crackdown on organised crime. Task Force Viper officers to target bikies and criminal gangs after the spate of gun violence on Melbourne streets. Licence to lease the almost $8 billion deal to partly privatise Vic Roads. What it will mean for your personal information and the new fees coming. Fresh start, the Prime Minister to meet French President Emmanuel Macron as he tries to repair the relationship between the two countries. We're live to Paris with the latest. Cervical cancer game changer. The life-saving test women can now do themselves. How this will allow more communities to be screened. And bad behaviour crackdown. Nick Kyrgios's hefty fine for his vulgar act at Wimbledon. This is 10 News First Melbourne with Natasha Exelby. Good evening. First tonight, outlaw, outlaw motorcycle gangs have been put on notice after a string of violent shootings across the city's northern suburbs. Victoria Police has vowed to disrupt and dismantle organised crime through a new Viper task force. Melbourne's wave of gun violence firmly in the sights of Victoria Police. And it's going to be aimed at preventing detecting, disrupting and dismantling organised crime. A new Viper task force will target those involved in dangerous activity, including the latest round of shootings. Outlaw motorcycle gangs, serious and organised crime individual entities, street gangs. 80 specialist officers will join the team. Detectives, road policing, intelligence and tactical members from public order response. All part of the coordinated attack. Our aim is to smash these individuals and these gangs. In the short term and specific, uh, for specific challenges, they can be very effective. The announcement follows a string of public shootings, including ex-Mongol Sam Abdul-Rahim, who was targeted at his cousin's funeral at Faulkner. But the force insists Viper has been under consideration for months following last year's Crime Command review. The timing, uh, can I say, it doesn't hurt us by any stage of the game, the timing, given what we've seen over the last week. We have had a number of uh, shootings, but we've been planning for this for over a year. For wider policing issues, um, you need uh, a multi-pronged uh, effort to reduce the availability of guns. Others say laws need to be changed. Today we see the Victoria Police are starting a Viper squad because of the violence on the streets, because of the bikies that we've been allowed into this state. The Chief Commissioner says the new team won't impact resources on the front line or from other specialised units. Viper Task Force will get to work on Monday. Jade Kotick for 10 News First. Victorian L and P platers will be entitled to free licences through a deal where Vic Roads has been partially moved to private hands. Concerns have been raised, though, that the cost of vehicle registration will skyrocket, but the government insists nothing will change. Vic Roads partially privatised at a premium. It is a considerably larger sum than we anticipated we'd get. A consortium of Aware Super, Australian Retirement Trust and Macquarie Investments has entered a joint venture with the Victorian government, forking out nearly $8 billion to operate the licence and registration arm of Vic Roads for 40 years. We do expect it to be a solid return, but obviously uh, it will rely on us delivering a good service to customers. Money from the deal will go to the Victorian Future Fund. The Andrews government is selling off what Victorians own to pay for its record debt while the agency's ageing digital infrastructure will be upgraded at no cost to the taxpayer. The IT systems simply haven't been up to the task. As part of the agreement, from August there'll be no licence or online test fees for learners. P-Play drivers also benefit from waived fees, while drivers who avoid demerit points for three years will receive a discount on licence renewal. And I think uh, like the, the, the least we can do is give back to motorists. But there are concerns about what it will mean for the price of vehicle registration. I think if you look at almost any privatisation in the history of the world, it has always led to higher prices. There should have been some clear mechanism that would have stopped this careering out of control. Treasurer Tim Pallas insists while the consortium can charge whatever it wants for extras like custom plates, the way rego prices are set won't change. We're not in the business of jacking up registration and licensing fees. There's linkage. So again, uh, there's linkage to, to uh, state 
at uh, CPI. Patrick Murrell for 10 News First. A man who was questioned over a fatal shooting at Cranbourne has been released without charge. The 49-year-old was taken into custody after another man was shot dead in the middle of the street on Wednesday night. Police say an argument broke out between two people before one opened fire at about 8pm. The 43-year-old victim died at the scene. Investigators are still searching for the gun. A Cario man has been charged with manslaughter following the death of a suspected thief at a takeaway fish and chip shop. The 31-year-old is accused of hitting another man with a bat after witnessing a break-in on June 20. As a result, the 48-year-old victim suffered life-threatening injuries and died in hospital three days later. The pressure is on again for Melbourne airport staff tonight with tens of thousands of travellers passing through the terminals. School holidays began in New South Wales this afternoon, adding to the number of families jetting off. Victorian schools are off for another week as well. Airport authorities say 95,000 people went through the facility today and that figure will reach 350,000 by Monday morning. The Prime Minister is just hours away from a crucial meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron to hopefully close the chapter on our two countries' failed submarine deal fallout. TENS Europe correspondent John Paul Gonzo is travelling with the PM. John Paul joins us live now. Anthony Albanese arriving in Paris under a dark cloud to try to fix a mess he didn't make. Uh, President Macron wants to have a good relationship with Australia and Australia wants to have a good relationship with him and his government. France was furious when Australia cancelled a $90 billion submarine contract last year, instead opting to purchase nuclear-powered subs as part of the AUKUS alliance with the US and UK. Scott Morrison was accused of being dishonest and deceiving Emmanuel Macron. You think he lied to you? I don't think, I know. The bust-up seriously damaged diplomatic ties. These talks in the next few hours are a chance to finally start over. The Prime Minister wouldn't say if he plans to apologise to Emmanuel Macron during their meeting, and Anthony Albanese insists whatever is discussed will be kept private. The Prime Minister was welcomed by a familiar face in France, former Liberal Finance Minister Matthias Cormann, who is now head of the OECD. The two men, once fierce political rivals, now allies. But it seems not everyone is as well acquainted with Anthony Albanese. The Canadian Prime Minister appeared to forget who he was. It's uh, a real pleasure uh, to be uh, uh, meeting with uh, a, a great uh, progressive leader. After several excruciating seconds, Justin Trudeau almost got it right. With, uh, with Tony and, and uh, all our friends in Australia. Scott Morrison knows that pain. And I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. And hopefully today's meeting with Macron is more memorable. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First, Paris. And John Paul Gonzo joins us live now from Paris. John Paul, suffice to say, there's a lot at stake in the PM getting this one right. Well, Tash, you're absolutely right. And it's pretty telling, isn't it, that Anthony Albanese has made it his mission to get to Paris so early in his prime ministership. France is, of course, a key European partner for Australia. And it's believed President Macron worked to block an EU trade deal in the wake of the submarine deal fallout. In contrast, New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has just signed a very lucrative deal with the European Union. So Anthony Albanese is banking on what he is calling a new era of relations between Australia and France, helped along by more ambitious targets on climate change. The two leaders will hold private discussions in the next few hours and then there'll be a joint media conference where they're set to outline exactly what that new era looks like for our two countries. Tash. Thanks, John Paul.
Guy Sebastian's former manager will remain on bail after being found guilty of defrauding the singer to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the judge has warned there's a reasonable chance he's going to jail. Arriving at court this morning, Titus Day didn't know when he'd next be going home. It turned out it'd be this afternoon. I have no comment. Is this your lucky day? Guy Sebastian's former manager had a night to think about the 34 counts of fraud of which a jury yesterday found him guilty for embezzling more than $600,000 of the Australian singer's royalties and performance fees. Day was acquitted of 13 other counts. What do you say to the jury's verdicts? The Crown had sought for him to be taken into custody under recent changes to the Bail Act. The bail must be refused following conviction and prior to sentencing where the offender will be sentenced to full-time detention unless special or exceptional circumstances can be established. There can be no doubt, in fact the Crown says it's not even debatable that a period of actual imprisonment must eventuate, the court was told. It was disputed by Day's barrister arguing whether alternative penalties could be ruled out. The judge ultimately concluded, although it may well appear likely, even highly likely, that such a sentence of imprisonment will be imposed, I am not presently satisfied of its certainty on the limited evidence presently before the court. He's ordered Day to surrender his passport and report to police once a week. While bail has been continued, the judge has warned Day that decision does not mean that he won't be sentenced to jail, nor does it mean that it is unlikely. The victim, Mr Sebastian, has released a statement saying, I'm grateful that this painful chapter of my life is finally over. It was not only shocking, but also heartbreaking to discover the depth of betrayal and dishonesty that I uncovered. A sentence hearing is scheduled for September. Alice Hogg for 10 News First. 100,000 Victorians have fled interstate during the pandemic, which is set to impact the way the Commonwealth carves up its $79 billion GST pool. Victoria's estimated population has been reduced to 6.5 million people. Yes, there'll be a marginal reduction in population and that will play a part in terms of the GST carve up. The Treasurer says the rise in inflation will likely increase the GST coffers, cancelling out the lost revenue from Victoria's population drop. And now here's Stephen previewing sport. And Stephen, the stakes are high again tonight at Marble Stadium. Yeah, they are, Tash. It's the Blues hosting the Saints as round 16 continues. We will cross live. Also, the Lions back on track. A sick Chris Scott takes the day off. The Aussies crush Sri Lanka in the first test. And I'm really good. That's Nick Kyrgios' assessment of himself as he cruises into round three at Wimbledon. Thank you, Stephen. Coming up in 10 News First, from your wages to your super, we break down the changes for the new financial year and what they'll mean for your family budget. The testing game changer to help overcome a major barrier in cervical cancer screening. And coming up after six, Must Do Melbourne will show you the best sights and activities this weekend.